Okay, let's finish 13.1 here with lesson three. So we were taking a look at net ionic equations and from those net ionic equations that uh, we reviewed from COM20 just uh, in the last lesson, what we identified here was that we could identify the two half reactions that were taking place in these redox reactions. What we found is that we could see a reduction half in which something gained electrons. We could also see the corresponding oxidation half for the species that lost those electrons to complete the reaction. So as something loses electrons in one half step, the other species in that equation had to gain them and be reduced in the other half step. So we often refer to these uh, redox reactions as a summation of two half reactions. And we'll use this half reaction method quite a bit as we go through the remainder of chapter 13. So what exactly is a half reaction? They represent what is happening to one reactant at a time in the overall reaction. When we look at these, we are going to balance the chemical entity first, and then we will balance uh, the charge. And in every redox reaction, it is important for you guys to realize that there must be two half reactions. I cannot have one without the other. All right, if something is to be reduced and gain electrons, something else must lose those electrons for them to be gained by a new species. So in one half reaction, one will always show a loss of electrons. There's your oxidation. And the other must show a gain of electrons, which is your reduction. All right, this is uh, given as a little moniker or mnemonic that you guys have in uh, your textbook, and it likes to refer to oil rig, which oxidation is losing of electrons and reduction is gaining of electrons. So just something to help you remember the two half reactions. My old chemistry teacher, like Leo the lion, says ger, where Leo means losing electrons is oxidation, and uh, ger, or what the lion is saying here, is just gaining electrons is reduction. So again, it's just the same thing we've been talking about for the last two lessons, and just an, maybe an easy way to remember it. So if one of those mnemonics work for you, go, go for it, use it, great, fantastic for you. Anything to make this easier is a good thing. So... Something that we will also see here is that we are transferring a particle. In all of our chemical reactions that we've learned how to balance to date, we did have to account for all of the atoms or, if you like, all of the moles of given individual reactants and products, and we made sure that the equation was balanced. What we're going to do now is realize that a small subatomic particle is being exchanged, and the amount of exchanged subatomic particles, these electrons, must be the same. I can't lose more than I gain, and I can't gain more than I lose. So, these electrons gained in the reduction must equal the total electrons lost in oxidation. In other words, we must balance our electrons, and this will become our new method by which we are going to balance these equations and predict products. We are going to track those electrons. Remember, all of this started out as this idea of electron transfer theory, they obviously play an important role. And so while each reaction has two half reactions, it is the balancing of the electrons that is going to allow us to equate these things and come up with overall reactions. So before we get into that, let's make sure that we can find these things. And so here we have a couple of reactions, much like the net ionic equations that we kind of finished off with in lesson two. You can see that platinum is reacting with tin to form tin ions and elemental or solid platinum. What we want to try and do is identify the oxidation and reduction from these and then see if we can write the two half reactions. So let's take a look at this. You can see that platinum is undergoing some sort of change. And so is platinum gaining electrons and becoming more towards the negative side or is it losing electrons and becoming more positive? If you look at it, platinum is a 2 plus ion here, which means it has a deficit of electrons compared to its protons, but over here it's balanced. So this obviously had to be a gain of electrons and therefore a reduction half reaction. Tin, on the other hand, you can see has gone through its loss to form a positive ion, and so this is a loss of electrons and therefore my oxidation. What I want to do now, and I'll have to do this on a separate sheet of paper, is write these two half reactions. I'd like to do it in a very set 
pattern, I will always write the reduction first and the oxidation half reaction second. Now as we do this, we had said that your platinum, okay, there it is, was the one that had been reduced. So platinum starts as a 2 plus ion and finishes as an elemental solid. So it had to gain electrons before it could form solid platinum, which means I should see two electrons as an additional reactant. Platinum 2 plus plus two electrons reduces to solid platinum. Tin, on the other hand, turns into the tin 2 plus ion here. And so I was elemental tin, but to form two plus tin ions, I must lose two electrons to do this. And so in oxidation, what we will see is that the electrons will appear as products because they've been lost by the original entity. But in reduction, the electrons will appear as a reactant as they must add into whatever entity you have in order to reduce it. This does allow us to go one step further. And we can add these two things together for a total redox reaction. All right, platinum, two plus, and tin, solid, ultimately produce for us elemental uh, platinum and tin, two plus ions in solution. I don't write th things on either side of the equation. Remember, we've seen this already where we were canceling things out in Hess's law. And so my two electrons gained are equal to my two electrons lost. They do not appear in the net redox reaction. And what we see is that our redox reaction was already balanced here with these net ionic ones. And so just like before, every once in a while, the equation is already balanced. Okay, we can do another one here. We can take a look at fictitious uh, element here, M3+. Plus. We have E, E2+, plus, and M solid. So if we take a look at what's happening to M here, M is doing very much, whoops, Kind of running out of room. Very much like what platinum did, it started as a three plus ion and it finishes as elemental, uh, whatever it was, and it was obviously a metal of some sort. Okay, and so we have this thing gaining three electrons, but if you take a look at E here, it has gone from element, pardon me, neutral elemental to a two plus charge, which means it has to have lost some electrons. So we have our two half reactions. You have the reduction of M and the oxidation of E. We can write those out again. And again, I always like to put reduction on top, oxidation on the bottom. It just, I don't know, makes more sense to me and it's nice to keep things consistent. So we have the reduction of M, or so we had M three plus ions. They had to gain three electrons in order to reduce to solid element M. Oxidation on the other hand, if we take a look at this one, was element E and it had to lose two electrons to form ionic E2+. Now in this case, to come up with our net redox reaction, we had said we must look at our electrons. And so I am gaining three but losing two. In order to be able to come up with a net redox reaction here, all right, I'm going to have to balance these electrons. In other words, I'm going to have to oxidize a lot more of element E to reduce a certain required amount of M3+. So what is the common factor between, or sorry, common multiple, pardon my French, uh, common multiple between two and three? The first place they would become equal is if I was to triple the oxidation reaction and lose six electrons for a doubling of my reduction half reaction to gain six electrons. If I do this, my electrons are now balanced and I now have a new balanced equation of two moles of M3 plus plus three moles of E solid to produce two moles of M solid and three moles of the E2 plus ion in solution. And so, oh my God, what just happened? We use the electrons to balance the equation rather than doing any sort of balancing by inspection. And so that's the important point to take away from this example is that it's going to become the electrons by which we balance these equations 
and come up with our overall balanced redox reactions. Okay, so there's a couple of examples there. Um, if you're still struggling with C, you can ask me in one of our tutorial sessions and things like that. But I do want to move on and get to uh, one more example here. And that's just taking a look at copper metal reacting with aqueous sulfur nitrate. Now, this is one that we had done before. Okay, if we go back to where we were, we did the non-ionic, the total ionic, and the net ionic. And note here, we had the, uh, an idea of uh, what was oxidation and what was reduction by looking at this equation. What we can do here is we can take a look at the fact that copper is oxidizing and silver is being reduced. Now if we look at that one, I can write these two half reactions. Sorry guys, I realize I'm getting about like 12 minutes here in the video, so I want to speed this along a little bit. But copper, if we're, as we were looking at this one, copper is losing electrons, all right, and we have our two electrons there that were lost to it to form that two plus ion. Silver is gaining an electron to reduce to elemental silver, and the electrons are no longer equal. So we would have to double our reduction half reaction here in order to be able to balance the electrons. Once they are balanced, then we can write down our species, and you can see that through the half reaction method, we came up with the exact same equation that we did with the uh, net ionic idea as well. So these half reactions become a much more efficient and simplified way of coming up with these balanced equations. Okay, you'll learn to like them, trust me, I promise. So, in order to uh, sort of hit this idea home, again, look at all the examples and read through the textbook on 561 to 564. Try some of these questions, all right? They will not go quite as far as some of the ones I have taken you through, okay? So they are a little bit more simplified. Um, and uh, try 9 and 10 on 564, try number 6 and 567, and see what you can come up with. There's also uh, lab 13.1. We would normally do this as a demo. I will try and show this to you guys here uh, as, as soon as we can. But complete the net ionic equations and use half reactions as you kind of go through 13.1, which I realize I don't have handy. Okay, and just be sure to identify your oxidation, your reduction, and the electron transfer. In other words, make sure that you can identify the parts and identify oxidation reduction from a lab that we did back in Science 10, where we were taking a look at single and double replacement reactions. What we're gonna do now is kind of review those and look at them again from the point of view of oxidation and reduction. All right, so a little bit of pre-lab uh, for 13.1, and then hopefully we can get into lab and uh, do that one shortly. Okay, there you go guys, that's chapter 13.1. Good luck with it, know what those words mean, and things will get easier as we go through the unit.